now witness the firepower of this fully armed and operational battle station. Defensive platforms can be built around your star bases to bolster the static defences of your empire. But how good are they? Are they actually worthwhile and should we be building them? In this video I am going to conclusively answer that question once and for all. I have done a whole suite of tests on every ship type and I'm going to be presenting you the most pertinent and most important results that will finally provide the answer of are defense platforms actually worth it? We're going to start in the early game looking at corvettes and then destroyers. I haven't included my results for cruisers as there was nothing special to report there. That fell in line with the results for battleships and destroyers as well, somewhere in between those. We will finally look at late game battleships and whether or not we can actually use defensive platforms to stand up to their impressive might. And last but not least, what about max evasion destroyers, which should be able to evade lots of the incoming fire from a defensive platform? Are they any good at defeating those destroyers? All of those questions and more will be answered in this video, so stick around and find out. But without any further ado, let's dive in and find out what's going on with defensive platforms. What is the situation right at the start of the game? So at the start of the game, you will have corvettes and you can also build defensive platforms. If somebody comes to attack you right off the bat before you have much technology, if they come to rush you down, that is either an AI or another player, basically any empire coming to destroy you at the start of the game, we need to know which is better to build more corvettes like this, or if instead you should first put those resources towards defensive platforms. For our defensive platforms, the main two designs I'm going to be showing off here, now don't worry, I have tested pretty much the full spectrum of designs, that being large, medium, and small slot designs, along with the missile station section. For our small slot defense platform, we're going to be going with a mix of kinetic and energy weapons that should damage both shields and armor pretty evenly and then leave the hulls open to cut up. The same is true of our large slot defense platform. Coming up against these, we're going to be having our gunboat type corvettes, that's all small slot weapons, and of course, a predominant threat with the corvette which is a missile boat corvette. When building up these defenses we're going to be paying special attention to the cost of our defensive platforms and the ships that come up against them because in all of these tests we're going to look at economically balanced fleets and that should tell us what's going to get us the best bang for our buck and what you should spend your money on first. Our starbase is going to have the gun battery modules available at the start of the game and a disruption field generator to weaken the enemy shields. Now, you may be surprised by this, but basically the defensive platforms are going to win every time against this 24 strong Corvette fleet. What you're seeing here is just with the small weapon slots, and they are actually very good against Corvettes. They have a high level of tracking, which negates the basic Corvette defense called evasion. And if you're enjoying this video, please defend that like button. You might expect the large slot defensive platforms to do pretty poorly. They have very low tracking and therefore shouldn't hit very often. However, they tend to engage earlier than the regular small slots because they do have longer range. And just like the small slot defensive platforms, they also carry the day. In fact, casualties for the Corvettes are pretty equivalent if you take the small platform or the large platform. And that means there really is no situation in which you should build a defense platform with these small weapon slots. The large weapons will take longer to defeat the Corvettes, but overall they're going to be doing just as much damage if not more damage and actually you're going to cause a pretty equivalent number of casualties. So in the early game it is best to spend your alloys if you're caught in the war on building defense platforms and then once you've filled up a starbase with defense platforms then start building some Corvettes, some other fleets to additionally support and defend that point. This is very much dependent, however, on if you can make sure the enemy is going to engage your star base. Let's say in this case we were being attacked from the northwest over here. This Lishval system would be an excellent strategic position to defend from. However, in a situation where we couldn't guarantee the site of the engagement, then it becomes more of a tricky issue whether or not you want to build a mobile fleet or build up defensive platforms. 
How about when we get a little later in the game? Here we have some destroyers that I've set up ready for roughly uh, about 30 years, 20 to 30 years into the game. This could be a reasonable design. We are going to be going with a large weapon and a medium weapon along with the artillery computer. This is going to be the best design you're going to find when coming up against star bases. Trust me, I have tested the others, but I am only going to show off this design here. This will be fighting against a defensive platform with only large weapon slots. I am throwing on the auxiliary fire control computers that will increase our accuracy. And of course, the combat computer is going to help with some extra tracking and fire rate too. Interestingly, again, just like with the Corvettes, when coming up against an equally balanced uh, fleet on both sides, equally balanced by economic weight, the defensive platforms win. However, you are going to be taking some losses this time as a defensive platformed army. You're not just going to wipe the floor with the destroyers and take absolutely no losses. And if we upgrade to a star fortress, which will come with an increased number of defensive platforms, let's adjust accordingly, we'll then get to fly in with an even larger destroyer fleet. But the story will be exactly the same yet again. The defensive platforms are going to take more losses than they did previously, absolutely, but you are still going to defeat destroyers of equivalent economic might. But what do you think about defensive platforms? Do you ever use them in your games? Let me know down in the comments below. So it is clear that building defensive platforms is better in the early and mid game. But how about later on in the late game when we have such terrifying things as artillery battleships? And of course, neutron launchers. Here we're going to be playing with and looking at pretty much the king of defensive platforms that is the neutron launcher defensive platform now i am going to be putting regenerative hull tissues on these platforms or alternatively you could also put shield capacitors to boost your shield instead of your armor and hull points as the regen here will work during combat and effectively boost your total hull or armor you don't want to run something like an auxiliary fire control because the sapient combat computers which you should all be able to get of every empire type will give you plus 10 chance to hit, when combined with the base accuracy of 90% for a neutron launcher will put you up to 100%. So in the late game, auxiliary fire controls are pretty much useless on defensive platforms. We will also be looking at what carrier defensive platforms can do, that is platforms with advanced strike craft or hangars, because this is something that conventional wisdom, I believe is out there and says that this is pretty much the best type of defensive platform. So we'll look at how this performs as well. Facing off against these, we have our traditional artillery battleships, Giga Cannon X slots, along with neutron launchers as well. And of course, auxiliary fire controls to boost our accuracy as high as possible. I'm also going to assume that you have completely finished the unyielding tradition. This is going to give us some great effects for our stations and defensive platforms. As you can see, defensive zeal is going to give us a third extra hull points and damage. Fortress Doctrine will reduce the cost of upgrading our star bases. And the final finisher effect here will increase our defensive platform cap by 50%. On top of that, I'm also going to be taking the Ascension perk Eternal Vigilance to increase our star base damage, our star base hull points, our defense platform damage, and our defense platform cap by plus five. This plus five will stack with the 50% from unyielding and in effect be plus 7.5. Don't forget to also take Supremacy as the Master Shipwrights will reduce the ship build cost or the build cost of your defensive platforms by 10%. Altogether, this is going to let me put out 51 defense platforms in total, and these are all the neutron launcher platforms with our regenerative hull tissue. How do these do against the battleships? Well, the battleships fly in and engage, and they do do some damage. However, the neutron launchers are quickly and effectively able to dispatch a battleship fleet of equal cost to the defensive platforms and the station itself. You are going to receive some losses with your defensive platforms, but overall you should win every engagement. And that then does mean if you build these neutron launcher platforms, they're better than artillery battleships from a cost perspective. And therefore you should put them down first before using the rest of your alloys and resources to build other mobile battleships to reinforce this defensive position. How about if we look at the hangar defensive platforms instead? This actually gives our defensive position a higher military power which in theory should mean they should do even better against these artillery battleships. 
And as you could see here from this engagement, the carriers do launch. However, those artillery battleships are firing further, they are firing faster, and they are firing before the fighters even get into range. And that's why you will lose every single one of your carrier platforms, your fighter bay platforms, if you try to use them to defend against battleships like this in the late game. They are simply not up to the cut. They don't work. You're only going to lose around uh, 5 to 15 percent of your battleships, whereas conversely you're going to lose every single defensive platform and your station if you try to set it up this way. There is one final type of platform we have not looked at and have not talked about, and that is the Ion Cannon platform. This is equipped with a very powerful Ion Cannon, a Titan weapon with massive range. However, it does have a very long cooldown, which means it's not going to fire very many shots. It is also relatively cheaper than your other defensive platforms. Each of these Ion Cannon platforms takes up eight defense platform slots. So if you were to fill those eight slots with neutron launchers, that would cost you around 4,000 alloys, whereas one of these Ion Cannons is only around 1,800. That does mean that if you fill up your starbase with these Ion Cannon platforms, you won't get as many of them as if you were to build just neutron launchers in terms of the spending you're going to need. But let's see how they're doing. You're going to get the first shots off with your Titan Lances. They have massive range and they will be able to engage uh, first. However, whilst you will win the combat most of the time, the losses you're going to suffer will be absolutely astronomical. And due to the RNG nature of these weapons, you could find yourself in a situation where some of your Titan Lances actually miss and then you lose the combat. You're going to win the battle around 75% of the time, although in a lot of cases every single defensive platform will be lost, leaving you with just a naked star base and nothing less. This does mean that Ion Cannons are definitely a uh, less effective uh, ship type to take and they are less effective than Neutron Launchers and take up too many slots on your star base. But what if we were to take a mixed position where we, for instance, took one of our iron cannons with a very large range and therefore a very large engagement range and filled up our defensive platforms with carriers otherwise. That should mean our carriers are able to engage early. That should mean our carriers are able to launch early and begin engaging the artillery battleships before they actually get a chance to fire. As you can see, the fighters will launch early, the Titan Lance will fire, and then they will start engaging the artillery battleships before the artillery battleships get a chance to start shooting. This will mean that they do actually win the day and defeat the incoming artillery battleships. They, however, do take reasonable losses, and because of the low damage done by these weapons, you actually find that there are a large number of artillery battleships that are able to retreat. And this does mean that we probably don't want to be using this weapon, we instead want to be using something like a Neutron Launcher. And in fact, if we replace them with a Neutron Launcher, we see that we get a similar number of losses in terms of defensive platforms. However, we will completely eviscerate the enemy battleship fleet, destroying almost every single battleship in the fleet, as very few will be able to retreat from the Neutron Launchers. But what about if in the late game we come to fight with a Max Evasion Destroyer? Yes, a ship with very high evasion that should present a problem for our low tracking Neutron Launchers. What will that do? How about versus our late game Psionic Destroyers? They're going to have a very high evasion. These have 80% with my Psychic Admiral along with the Gale Speed plus all of the other things you come to know and love. They will be facing off against the bad boys, the Neutron Launcher King Class Defense Platforms. What you are going to see though is that these uh, these destroyers don't actually cut the mustard. You're going to be getting massive losses in the destroyer fleet from these neutron launcher defensive platforms which just have absolutely phenomenal tracking due to their combat computers. It is not a fair fight at all. The destroyers here, these evasion destroyers, are completely eviscerated. 
all of this means that generally speaking you want to use the large slot weapons on your defensive platforms they are the most economical and on top of that it is always better to build defensive platforms than any other ship type from an economic perspective once you've filled up those slots do change over and start building regular fleets use them to reinforce your defensive positions but overall, I can say without any doubt that defensive platforms are some of uh, that defensive platforms for the cost they are are the best ship in the game. Defensive platforms are only useful when we're trying to defend. What if we, however, start with a doomsday start, meaning our homeworld is going to explode in the first 30 to 40 years? What should we be doing then? If you'd like to know how a doomsday start can end up being a meta build, click the video on screen now.